Hello and welcome to this episode of Quality of Your Life. I'm your host, Dave Augustine. Today we are going to talk about wound care. And helping us with that discussion is Dr. Todd Summer, who is the Medical Director at HSHS Regional Center Wound Care and Hyperbaric Center. Welcome to the show, Dr. Summer. Thank you very much for having me here today. Um, to start out, could you give us a background of your study in preparation to get into this field? Well, a little bit about uh, my medical history. I actually started uh, my medical training as a podiatrist, so I went to podiatry school, subsequently did my podiatry residency, practiced for 10 years, and then went back to medical school so I could enhance just uh, uh, my care of the patient so I could take care of the whole patient and not be focused-based, just the lower extremity. Did my residency at uh, Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and then I've been with Prevea Health and associated with the HSHS system since 1999 joined um, our wound care center. We started out initially at St. Vincent Hospital, which is part of the region of the HSHS, this part of the state, which would include St. Nicholas, St. Vincent Hospital, and St. Clair, and um, been associated with uh, wound care uh, since about 2002, and have had the pleasure of being their medical director uh, over the last uh, uh, 12 years, and have been associated here with our St. Nick's facility over the last uh, three years. Okay. St. Clair, that's a recent addition to the HSHS system, correct? That's true. And uh, our wound center there has just actually, uh, just actually uh, recently had the addition of uh, HBO there, where the one here at St. Uh, Nick's, I believe, has been in existence for about eight years. Mm -hmm. And it's had HBO and wound care associated with it for its whole duration. Yep. I remember when I was still at St. Nick, I think it was just starting out the wound center, as far as that goes with the facilities. So it's great to see that, you know, it's grown and become a regional practice. And as our population ages too, um, it's amazing, you know, how the wound care market has just changed. And the products that are available are just phenomenal today. What we can do for wounds compared to even a decade mm -hmm. ago is just is amazing. So could you give a brief background on wound care and what it all entails? Well, wound care is, and people will always say too, you know, when is the appropriate time for a patient to go to the wound center? And is this something that people should think of as a self-referral or does it have to be a physician referral? And our job in a wound center is to work with the patient's primary care physician. So in other words, uh, it's a team approach. Uh, not only do we uh, work as our wound center physician and we also have some uh, uh, wonderful nurse practitioners that are part of our wound center team, uh, uh, interact with the patient's primary care physician. So uh, it's a team approach. Uh, uh, they're necessary to optimize the patient's medical conditions. Many of these patients will have diabetes, uh, heart disease, uh, all kinds of medical issues that always uh, need to be optimized if we're going to have good wound healing. The wound healing uh, arena has really changed significantly. Not only have the products uh, available for wound care uh, uh, changed significantly in the last decade, but our vascular colleagues, the uh, intricacy of the vascular surgery that's being done today has really optimized our limb salvage ability and has really enhanced our wound care ability. Um, our diagnostic testing that we offer in our wound centers today are just phenomenal uh, and um, uh, just our whole wound salvage is much greater. Um, if you ask what type of wound or what type of patients and what type of wounds really are the type of wounds that a wound care center is going to see. Well, it's variable, just like the age scope. If you take a look at traditionally, we'll see patients from all age groups. Wounds are probably a little bit more common in our older population just because as we age, our ability to fight off of infection sometimes is uh, compromised. Uh, we sometimes as we age have more diseases that can again inhibit wound healing. So, um, so we see a potpourri but again, uh, a good bulk of our patients would be um, the older group, which sometimes will have more difficult uh, ability to heal their wounds. What type of wounds do you see? Or, you know, years ago, if you had to cut your finger, you spray a little Bactine on it and the Band-Aid and you were good to go. So what types of wounds, you know, when it, when it gets in your area, how severe are they or what types do you see? Well, a lot of the wounds we see, we see a lot of acute injuries too, like your crush injuries, for instance. Um, we work in close coordination with our orthopedic group, plastic surgery, uh, and these groups realize that in those cases, uh, hyperbarics, which is an oxygen chamber that's utilized to enhance uh, blood flow and oxygen to, to injured tissue, 
uh, realize that those kind of patients need to see us acutely. We also see a lot of patients that have chronic wounds. It's very common for patients that come in and say, you know, I've had this wound for two or three years. It's been difficult to heal. Uh, and so they'll come to us for uh, expertise in, in that area. Okay. I can see where with your background you need to be closely in tune with the other disciplines, you know, with wound because there's other health conditions this day and age, you know, what we're seeing with, like you said, diabetes and, you know, high blood pressure and other things that help contribute to, you know, wound healing as well. So you really have to be in tune with. And, and if you say, what group do we work with? It's not just the hardcore uh, uh, wound staff, but we also have several specialties that we look at for consultants. Um, our radiology consultants, as well as our vascular, who do a lot of the endovascular work for us are important. Um, our orthopedic group, plastic surgery, podiatry, all these groups really fall into uh, consultant groups that are necessary to enhance the patient's wound healing ability. Okay. In those techniques that you use, what are some of the educational, you know, things you have to go through or advisory, you know, type things when you're consulting with, you know, using these techniques? Well, if you look at our training, basically, people will say, well, let's look at the hyperbaric part for a second. What extra training does your staff need just for uh, the HBO portion? Mm -hmm. Well, when, we, uh, are, uh, when a new person comes on board and they're looking to, to be part of our staff, uh, they're sent out for an intensive week uh, lecture training course, hands-on, about just the hyperbarics, uh, indications for it, uh, the actual uh, logistics of the equipment itself, uh, and to continue to be efficient at that of course, we have to take uh, several hours of CME per year mm -hmm. and have to uh, um, complete X amount of dives to keep our competency level in that area. Okay. What are some of the um, methods that you use for wound treatment? I mean, you mentioned the hyperbaric chamber. We can get to that a little bit. But what are some of the other you know, types of you know, techniques that you use in the wound center? Well, I think it depends on the type of wound we're treating. Okay, probably one of the greatest things in wound care has been the wound vac. So if we look at some of the surgical wounds, and again, uh, approximately 1% of surgeries just in general have a risk for infection that will then require uh, assistance from a wound center equivalent. The wound vac, vac has been a wonderful device that has helped not just surgical wounds, but some of the diabetic wounds uh, and venous stasis wounds. It's just amazing how that has really accelerated wound healing. It's been a great asset. Um, for some of the diabetic foot ulcers uh, and for some of the what's called Charcot disease, it's an advanced deterioration of the bones that occur in mm -hmm. some of the diabetic extremities in patients that have uh, a neuropathy. Uh, we do a lot of casting sometimes. It's called total contact casting to help assist in uh, healing some of the diabetic ulcers. So um, we use a lot of biologics, which would be, uh, think of it kind of like a pseudo skin graft that has a lot of growth factors and things mm -hmm. that help the body heal ulcers. So that's another entity that's used in wound centers uh, um, quite frequently to assist in wound healing. Um, offloading, sometimes just education the patient, get them to understand the importance of not weight bearing, especially if the wound is on an extremity. Okay. So the wounds are more, are they external wounds, you know, so to speak, versus internal wounds? Well, most of the wounds that a wound center we're treating, you know, would be external. Okay. okay at least would have a, a but um, again, there are areas where uh, some of the general surgeons, et cetera, where we'd be seeing some uh, abdominal wounds, but usually those would be at least partially closed. So we mm -hmm. would be seeing, like you said, may the, most of the wound we'd be treating would be an external. Okay. Is it a path that patients go down? It isn't like, okay, come in once and you're treated, ready to go. Is it usually a repetitious or a certain um, plan that you go through? Well, if, you, if we just look at our diabetic group for starters, because what you want to know is number one, are wounds recurrent and uh, is there chronicity to some of these wounds in the treatment program? If we look at the diabetic group and uh, within a lifetime, approximately 25% of our diabetics are going to sustain an ulcer or a wound bad enough that's going to need medical care. And within any one year, there's going to be about three to 4% of these people having ulcers. The part that makes it so complex for our diabetic group is they many times have lost feeling in both their feet and hands. Mm -hmm. So they really don't have a clue, they have a sore until they sometimes will see either drainage uh, you know, on a, a garment or they will develop a fever. And so that what's, that's what makes the diabetic group so complex. 
they're high risk for recurrence. And uh, again, chronicity uh, is pretty high with that group as far as their wounds go. Okay. Do you also, in the treatment of wounds, is there like medications involved along with that, or is it pretty much just you know looking at the wound itself and treating it with the techniques like you had said? Well, when we, we're treating a wound, it's not just topical medications like you're asking about. Okay. We're coordinating it many times with uh, uh, antibiotics, which can be either IV or oral. And on many of these complex cases, we have the assistance of our infectious disease colleagues that fine tune our antibiotic choices. And uh, many times these can be six, sometimes even eight weeks worth of uh, IV antibiotics. So uh, again, it's a team approach it's not just topical wound modalities that are okay. used on many of these wounds, but uh, many times IV. Um, we had to depend on our family practice internal medicine colleagues to optimize their diabetes or some of the other healthcare issues that might be preventing their wounds from healing. So it's a real group, a composite of treatment, not just topical treatment that goes into wound care. Okay. What about the hyperbaric part of it? How does that work? I mean, that's fairly new in the, in the discipline of wounds, is it not? Uh, fairly new. If you go back to the history of it, of course, hyperbarics originally was used for divers with the bends. Mm -hmm. uh, has been used in a lot of institutions for carbon monoxide poisoning. Our facility traditionally uses our hyperbarics to assist in wound care. And it's a whole group of things that we treat. If you say, what are the indications for hyperbarics and what percentage of your wound care patients actually utilize it? Our util the average utilization is about 10 to 15% nationwide of hyperbarics for all wounds in general. Uh, traditionally, the things that are most commonly treated with hyperbarics would be uh, bone infections that are recalcitrant, in other words, are not resolved with antibiotics and surgery. So hyperbarics augments resolution of uh, uh, refractory osteomyelitis, as it's called, meaning a bone infection that is resistant uh, to the treatment we talked about. If you say, well, what does the hyperbarics do in those cases? It enhances blood flow and enhances antibiotic delivery, so it helps in both of those areas. The hyperbarics, if you think about it, it's a chamber uh, that changes the pressure, so it's equivalent to a diver being at 33 feet of seawater, mm -hmm. so that now increases the pressure to two atmospheres. So now the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood in the fluid or plasma part of the blood is enhanced, so we can enhance oxygen delivery to the wound, and that's how that works. So it works well in uh, cases where people are having severe infections, uh, crush injuries, flaps, grafts that are at risk that some of the plastic surgeons mm -hmm. have done and a lot of the diabetic foot ulcers that of a certain level of severity, it seems to really enhance healing for those. So kind of in sum, summing it up, it's just basically helping the body heal itself. That's, that's basically a, what you're doing to get... That's a perfect response. That's 100% correct. Nice. Lately, you've been seeing a lot of you know, the shingles virus and everything. Does, do you treat the shingles virus, or is there a possibility, like with the hyperbaric or other wound thing, to treat that, or is that a different type well, of... Well, you know, that, is a, as you know, tends to be a bullous eruption along a nerve tract that subsequently ulcerates. Um, those generally seem to heal quite well, and they haven't, that particular entity has not really required hyperbarics, okay? okay. So those usually do pretty well just with uh, standard management. Uh, okay. Because I know when you see someone do some reading on it or the, you know, the pictures online, it's like, wow, it's almost like it's a festering type thing. Yeah. Where you would think, you know, some of the wound care techniques that might work on it, but it's a different animal, I guess. Well, at least for hyperbaric. Hyperbaric usually is not necessary to heal those particular issues. Okay. Okay. Um, what are some of the other disciplines that are on your team? Is it just specifically wound care or do you have other disciplines of medicines or do you work with other colleagues on, you know, when you come up with a health plan or a wound care plan? Very good question. Actually, so if we look at our consultant team, uh, again, um, because we treat so many different things, the other area that we treat with a lot is we treat what's called soft tissue rating necrosis. So many of our uh, patients that have had or have had to requ have required radiation treatment for different types of cancers, sometimes that tissue, the blood flow years later is compromised. So sometimes wounds will develop in those areas if they require surgery. And so we many times are interacting with our oncology colleagues uh, to uh, interact as far as wound care. That's another area, of course, that hyperbarics works really well for. 
as uh, some of the areas that have had radiation exposure and now have difficult wounds to heal. Okay. With the whole fairly new practice of wound care and hyperbaric, what would you say are the percentage increase of wounds being cured or healed completely versus when we didn't have it? Well, you know, if we have to depend on our primary care physicians, which do a wonderful job in sure. wound care, um, and we compare it to a wound center that deals with the, the complex wounds that don't heal, and, and we always say that, you know, if, if a wound hasn't healed in four weeks, then it probably needs the expertise of a wound center to assist. And, and so what we usually do is build on what the primary care physicians have already done for their wound care. And, um, and that seems to work, work well. Okay. So when do patients really get involved with a wound center like what you have? Is it they first they go through their, like you had said, they go through their primary physician, they take a look at it, and then they said, well, we should really get to the wound care? Or can they, you know, when they look at a wound, let's say right off, and they say, we got to get this immediately to wound care. Well, we have several, several entry levels to our wound care center. Uh, many patients will come through urgent care or the emergency department, and the urgent care physician, nurse practitioner, or, or the ER physician or mid-level will say, gosh, this is a wound that looks pretty serious. So they will do a direct referral over to the, our wound center. Um, our primary care physician colleagues and uh, mid-levels, also if they see a challenging wound in their clinic that they feel has not responded uh, in what they consider a reasonable period of time, they will either send it acutely or after they've worked with it for a period of time. Um, and we see quite a bit from our surgical colleagues, of course, if they have a mm -hmm. uh, difficult uh, surgical wound where they feel the wound center would assist in their wound healing, we get quite a few referrals from them. And we get a lot of patients that are self-referrals too. Uh, patients will talk to their friends and they'll say, you know, oh, by the way, I had this wound that was healed by our wound center and subsequently uh, we'll do self-referrals too. So it's kind of a, a, a potpourri, if you want to use that term, of referrals from several sources. So in, in the, the advantage, the nice thing about our wound center is we're the only one locally, of course, that has the combination of wound care and hyperbarics together. So that makes it uh, very convenient for the patient. Okay. Um, on average, what would you see your census being in, a, let's say, just say a month, about number of patients? Well, it's, Average or... it's a little difficult because I, I work at several of the centers. If yeah. you look at, um, uh, at St. Vincent Center where I see do more patient care, mm -hmm. we're here at, uh, down here I do more administrative okay. uh, uh, um, endeavors. Uh, my typical day at a wound center, I'm usually seeing somewhere between 30 and 40 patients a day that I'm responsible for. Wow. So, uh, but of course I have several teams that assist me in that. Sure. I have. Uh, an RN, a CNA in the room with me, so uh, we each have our specific tasks so we can efficiently, uh, you know, see mm -hmm. the patient and, uh, and take care of them very well yeah. with that volume. Yep. I mean, that's, that's fantastic, and, you know, as our knowledge of medicine, you know, gets better, you know, as, as years go on, you know, we're actually, I think, getting ahead of the game or at least doing good where years ago, well, that was just natural causes. You know, we didn't have it where now we're discovering more. So we're actually, you know, helping our quality of life. And, and if you look at wound care in general, you know, we've been able to lower the amputation rate, which is really good. Yep. And that's, again, with the uh, composite help of our vascular colleagues, as well as the high-tech wound care. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're, the wound care as our population ages and as the incidence of diabetes increases, I think you're going to see uh, wound care centers are going to become more and more important uh, in the future even. Yeah. When you're working with the patients and coordinating a care plan, what other services do you coordinate or bring in as far as helping with that plan and aiding? Well, I think, you know, the question is like the first visit that when we see a patient, you know, what is the criteria? Well, we want to look at the nutritional status of the patient, uh, make sure that their nutritional status is good because that's important for wound healing. We really want to look at the vascular status of the patient because if the flow is bad, then uh, any kind of wound care locally uh, is not going to be mm -hmm. adequate. We want to make sure that there's not a, se a severe infectious process going on. So if there is, we want a colleague, again, our infectious disease colleagues to assist us. So we try to get a very uh, intensive assessment early with the patient so that we can pinpoint where their problems are and and hopefully accelerate their, their wound healing ability. I would imagine family history also plays into that as well. A good family history, good yeah. medical history, uh, counseling, of course, if they have a smoking history, 
try to counsel them in, in smoking cessation because we all know that that impedes wound healing mm -hmm. uh, too. Uh, and if we see specific deformities that might be causing some of the wounds, of course, having some of our colleagues assist us in possibly uh, reducing some of those deformities mm -hmm. is very important too. Yep. I would imagine the integrated medical record like EPIC helps a lot in re retrieving that information as well. Uh, electronic records have definitely uh, made uh, patient uh, data much more accessible. Uh, I wouldn't say it's shortened the work day for the yeah. physician, obviously, but uh, uh, yes, I have to agree that's made, uh, I think, medicine much more efficient and, and made the, the records. And, and same thing with uh, uh, digital x-rays mm -hmm. uh, made, uh, uh, you know, the x-rays and everything way much more available uh, when comparing to some of more of the historic records. Right. I think the administrative part may be more, but the time to get test results to the doctor who's doing the diagnosis has much, shrunk quite a bit. Much quicker, much more organized. Instead of waiting for the lab, you know, to get them developed and they got to come across the street or being sent out and then all of that, so it's a lot quicker. Very true, very true. Which is nice. What are some of the other specialties that the Wound Center offers here in Sheboygan at St. Nick? Well, if you look at our consultant, group of consultants, and again, um, if we look at the, the core staff, if we start out with that at the Wound Center, that would include Myself, who's a medical director as our physician. Uh, we have uh, two excellent nurse practitioners, actually three excellent nurse practitioners that all have extensive HBO and wound care experience that uh, monitor our clinic. Our consultant staff here is quite extensive. Our consultant staff would include plastic surgery, vascular surgery, interventional radiology, cardiology, orthopedics, podiatry, internal medicine, family practice, infectious disease, and endocrinology. So if you look at our consultant team that we have available to assist us with our wound care, it's pretty extensive. So I think we have pretty much the whole gamut covered. Yeah, that's fantastic. So as medical director, is there anybody else who substitutes for you? Like some of the other you know, disciplines like radiology, they have you know, radiologists who rotate between the system and cover. So are you pretty much it or are there other um, colleagues in your area of practice too in the region? Well, there are, you know, a lot of, there are more people in, uh, physicians in wound care, of course, in our Green Bay area than there is right here in our St. Nicholas sure. area. Uh, so as far as medical director, I'm their primary physician, you know, here with, as well as all the consultant physicians and mid-level clinicians that we uh, reviewed previously. Okay. Do you see the field of wound care, of people entering wound care as far as like what you did, you went into it, you see that becoming more of a preferred preferred, excuse me, um, area of medical practice? Well, you know, what you're wondering about is, is this a new specialty that's just starting to blossom is the question. And I have to agree with that 100%. If you look at hyperbarics now, um, uh, I'm boarded in hyperbarics, which is unusual. Now you have to do a one-year fellowship to have the same board that I have. I was lucky that I had been in the field for X amount of years. Mm -hmm. So with my clinical experience, I was able to sit for their exam and subsequently get that board certification in hyperbarics. Now, to get the same one I have, you have to do a one-year fellowship on top of your regular specialty residency of whatever you're doing besides wound care. So as wound care develops, I, will, I could see this very in the very near future becoming mm -hmm. a whole residency program by itself. Nice. What do you see the success rate as when somebody comes to a wound center as far as being treated? I mean. Very good question. If you look at our success rate of all comers, now remember that includes not only acute wounds that are fresh, mm -hmm. but we treat a lot of wounds where patients have said, you know, I've had this for 10 years yep. or et cetera. So all comers, we vary, but we average anywhere from 90 up to as high as 96% uh, healed on all wounds. So I, I, we're very proud of our healing yes. rate. And, uh, uh, and I think that that's really good when you take a look at some of the wounds that we treat. That's fantastic. If you had to look into your crystal ball, where would you see wound care going in the future? Well, you know, as our health care system is going through changes, um, you know, the, the catalyst is going to be to try to keep people healthy. And our goal is to try to be able to treat as much outpatient in the future, I think, mm -hmm. is where it's going. So if we can prevent wounds that are of a lesser significance from becoming grossly infected, limb-threatening, or just life-threatening wounds, sure. we are really making a big dent in, in, in helping the patient a lot. So I foresee wound care as we 
uh, go switch to this, to the, as our healthcare goes through changes that are going to happen in the next several years, is going to play a bigger and bigger role to try to keep people healthy. Definitely. As a patient, what can I expect when I first come to the wound center? Well, as a patient, it's always scary going somewhere new, obviously. I mean, whether you're going to the dentist or going to a, a new physician. Um, but, uh, you know, we have a really cordial wound center and um, you're going to be, you know, greeted by uh, the, uh, the RN that's going to be taking your information, uh, by the CNA who's going to be assisting that RN in uh, information gathering. Uh, uh, there'll be, you know, a lot of questions the first visit, mm -hmm. and then we're going to lay out a strategy or treatment program with that patient, and then we're going to make sure the patient agrees with it. So it's very important when we make recommendations to say, okay, here's what I think is best for you, Mrs. X or Mr. X. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this? Do you feel what we're laying out for you is the best treatment strategy that you can make that time commitment, and this is something that you feel uh, is agreeable? Because without that, it's very difficult when the patient leaves the clinic. If they don't buy into your treatment program, right. then their compliance factor is going to be compromised. Yep. Um, one last question. If I'm, as a patient, want to find out where I can go to, or like you had mentioned, a self-referral, is there a website, phone number, or how can I contact? Um, sure. In fact, if you would like our, our current, the phone number here we have for our wound center in uh, Sheboygan is, uh, of course, 920 error code mm -hmm. 459 Five one eight zero is would get you in uh, then to the wound center. Um, our scheduler actually schedules both for the Green Bay site and the Sheboygan site. Okay. So uh, and they would be more than happy to to do that. If you have just questions in general, we have triage uh, RNs at both sites. They would be more than happy to answer any questions that uh, the public would have regarding wound care. Okay. Um, last final thoughts that you have before we wrap. We have about a minute left. I just feel blessed that I've been part of the wound care system and um, I just have a passion for it. And um, it's just, uh, it's the greatest thing. It, it reminds me of medicine a couple decades ago when you close a patient's wound and they're so happy. I mean, the, this is one of the few areas where they still bring in cookies and candy. Uh, it's just the patients, they, they just love you. It's just, uh, it's just a, a really rewarding profession and I'm just proud that I've been part of it. Okay, wonderful. Um, as far as the website, is it Purveya? Okay, it's www.stnicholashospital.org if you want more information online. Sorry about well, Thank you, Angie, who's in our studio audience, <laughs> consultant. So, um, Dr. Summer, I'd like to thank you for being on our show. For wound care, I think this was an excellent subject. I mean, I've learned a lot about it. Well, thank you very much for having the opportunity to join you. Okay. Um, this concludes this episode of Quality of Life. Um, if you have any questions or like to submit any suggestions or comments, you can contact us on our website at www.wscssheboygan.com. For Quality of Life and Dr. Summer, I'm Dave Augustine. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.